Hey there, today is Tuesday, February the 14th. Happy Valentine's Day, by the way. Uh, today we're reading in Acts chapter 16, looking at uh, some of this journey of Paul and Silas. They're gonna meet a man named Timothy today. They'll be in prison today. Uh, they'll be in a couple of different cities. There, there's a lot going on in Acts chapter 16. As I look at it initially, uh, I catch uh, my gets caught on verse number three to begin with, where Paul meets this young man named Timothy. And it says that everybody spoke well of Timothy and Paul wanted to take him along on a journey. And so he circumcised him and then he took him. Uh, I, I'm curious because in Acts 15, we read yesterday and it says that they didn't want to make it difficult for Gentiles who are turning to God. So this circumcision thing was a, an issue yesterday in the chapter. Today, Paul meets a young man whose father was Greek, a Gentile, and mother was Jewish, and he circumcises them to go with him. And I wonder why. Maybe you wondered why also. And a couple of thoughts and, and reasons maybe for this. First of all, uh, yesterday's chapter was talking specifically about Gentiles, people who were not Jews. Now, uh, in chapter 15, they, the people of the party of the Pharisees wanted everybody, Jewish or Gentile, to all fall under the law of the Old Testament and the Jews. And they said, no, they shouldn't make that a requirement. Well, today in Acts 16, we're talking about Timothy, whose father was a Gentile, his mother was a Jew, and so he is half Jewish. There's no indication that the Jews ever stopped, even Jewish Christians, this practice of circumcision, this outward sign of following. And so Paul, in Acts 16, is having this boy who is half Jewish follow what his people did. Also, uh, it's possible in my mind that as Paul takes Timothy, they're going to travel. And Paul's, his habit was to go into the synagogue first and then into the Gentile marketplaces and, and things like that. And so he knew that, that Timothy would be coming along into the Jewish places. And it's very possible that he had Timothy be circumcised because he knew that that would be a potential stumbling block to the Jews they were going to try to go reach. As leaders, as people who are disciple makers, and by the way, if you're following Jesus, then you are a disciple maker. If you're a disciple maker, then you are a leader of somebody as leaders. We are wise and we are mature when we limit ourselves, when we, when we take on sacrifices for ourselves to remove stumbling blocks to reach more people. That's what's happening with Timothy right here in Acts 16. As I, as I skim through, the part that really I wanted to focus on, though, is the, the last part of chapter 16. It says Paul and Silas were in prison. And Paul and Silas were passing through a marketplace. There was a, a young girl there that was coming along behind them, and she was walking behind them and, and talking and, and fortune-telling these things, and Paul became annoyed, and he cast out this demon out of her. He saved her. He, he gave her relief. Well, her owners were mad. They lost their money to make money. They were mad. They were angry. And they stirred up an attack against Paul and Silas. They had them arrested. They were stripped. They were beaten with rods. They were thrown in prison. They were, they were guarded carefully. They were put in the inner cell of the jail, fastened with feet in the stocks. They were miserable here. They were put into a, a situation that seemed a little bit hopeless, seemed painful. And how did Paul and Silas respond to this? Uh, now, I might have responded by complaining, by, by uh, uh, you know, uh, protesting the, the, the treatment I was receiving, but not Paul and Silas. It says in verse 25, about midnight, middle of the night, feet in stocks, sores on their bodies, bruises all over. They were praying and they were singing hymns to God. Now the word hymn means any kind of a song giving glory to God. They were praying and they were singing songs giving God glory. In the middle of the dark cell, in the middle of the chaos, in the middle of the pain. Well, as that's going on here, it says that the, the, there was a violent earthquake, the doors flew open, the, the jailer was going to kill himself. He thought all the prisoners had escaped, but Paul shouted, don't harm yourself, we are all here, why did all the prisoners, not just Paul and Silas, why did all the prisoners stay in this place? When they could have escaped, they could have ran off and done whatever, why did they all stay? I believe it's because of what Paul and Silas were doing, because they were demonstrating in the middle of a broken night 
how to stay calm, centered, and focused on Jesus. They were demonstrating this healing and a wholeness they get from Jesus in the middle of the chaos and the pain. Because of that, people who were broken, people who had the chance to run back into brokenness, instead were attracted to what they saw in Paul and Silas. They were attracted to Jesus that they saw in him. Well, it says they were, the jailer brought them out and had a conversation. What must we do to be saved? And Paul said, you've got to believe in the Lord and you'll be saved. And when you read that, there's no mention really of being baptized. You know, in Acts chapter 2, Peter tells the people to repent and believe, change their thinking and, be, and believe, and then be baptized in water, immersed in water for the forgiveness of sins, receive the Holy Spirit. That's what we do as a church when we follow Jesus. That's the symbol, the sign of our, our turning, our surrender to him. And in Acts 16, there's no mention of baptism right there. Peter, Paul just says, believe and you'll be saved. But if you read the next two verses, you'll see that then immediately the jailer and his household were all baptized. I really think that when Paul was talking here, he said something to the effect of believe in the Lord and you'll be saved. And then he went on to teach about baptism. This is what you do. This is what you need to surrender and submit to. So then they were all baptized. I think that as Luke, the writer of Acts, was recording these things, he was summarizing a lengthy period of time. And he thought we could put two and two together, believe. And so they were baptized. Clearly, Paul instructed that in the middle of this. If you, let me pause for a second. If you are trying to follow Jesus and you've not giving yourself over and being baptized in water to follow him. Now is the time to do that. You can comment on this video right here. You can uh, message the church. Email me, adam, at cccj.church, and I will have a conversation with you about being baptized, and that's something you can do just right away to follow Jesus. As I look at all this, I realize that Jesus uh, orchestrates opportunities for us. Orchestrates opportunities for us to follow uh, to people to follow, find and follow Jesus. Earlier in this chapter, it says they wanted to go somewhere that Jesus wouldn't let them, and so then Jesus sent them to another place. He orchestrates opportunities for people to follow him. I think for people, we can learn that they are attracted to Jesus' followers. When we're displaying the character of Jesus, they're attracted to that. And if I were taking the next step, I would want to remember to stay calm and focused in the middle of the chaos and the brokenness so that I can show people who Jesus is when it really matters. Let me read Acts 16. It says, Paul came to Derbe and then to Lystra, where a disciple named Timothy lived, whose mother was Jewish and a believer, but whose father was a Greek. The believers at Lystra and Iconium spoke well of him. Well, Paul wanted to take him along on his journey, so he circumcised him because of the Jews who lived in that area, for they all knew that his father was a Greek. And as they traveled from town to town, they delivered their decisions reached by the apostles and the elders in Jerusalem for the people to obey. And so the churches were strengthened in the faith and they grew daily in numbers. Well, then Paul and his companions traveled throughout the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. When they came to the border of Mysia, they tried to enter Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them to. And so they passed by Mysia and went down to Troas and during the night. Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him, Come over to Macedonia and help us. After Paul had seen the vision, we got up, ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. Well, from Troas, we put out to sea and sailed straight for Samothrace, and the next day we went on to Neapolis. From there, we traveled to Philippi, a Roman colony, and the leading city of that district of Macedonia, and we stayed there several days. On the Sabbath, we went outside the city to the gate to the, uh, sorry, the city gate to the river, where we expected to find a place of prayer. We sat down and we began to speak to the women who'd gathered there. One of those listening was a woman from the city of Thyatira named Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth. She was a worshiper of God, and the Lord opened her heart to respond to Paul's message. When she and the members of her household were baptized, she invited us to her home. If you consider me a believer in the Lord, she said, Come and stay at my house. And she persuaded us. Once, when we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a female slave who had a spirit by which she had predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune-telling, and she followed Paul and the rest of us, shouting, 
These men are servants of the Most High God, who are telling you the way to be saved. Well, she kept this up for many days, and finally Paul became so annoyed that he turned around. He said to the Spirit, In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. At that moment, the Spirit left her. And when her owners realized that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas, and they dragged them into the marketplace to face the authorities. They brought them before the magistrates. They said, These men are Jews and are throwing our city into an uproar by advocating customs unlawful for us Romans to accept or practice. So the crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas, and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten with rods. After they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison, and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. But when he received these orders, he put them in the inner cell, and he fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and at once all the prison doors flew open, and everyone's chains came loose. The jailer woke up, and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, Don't harm yourself! We are all here! The jailer called for lights. He rushed in. He fell trembling before Paul and Silas, and he then brought them out, and he asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Well, they replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all the others in his house. And at that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds, and then immediately he and all his household were baptized. The jailer brought them into his house, and he set a meal before them. He was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God, he and his whole household. And when it was daylight, the magistrates sent their officers to the jailer with the order, Release those men. And the jailer told Paul, The magistrates have ordered that you and Silas be released. Now you can leave, so go in peace. But Paul said to the officers, they beat us publicly without a trial, even though we are Roman citizens. And they threw us into the prison. And now do they want it to get rid of us so quietly? No, let them come themselves and escort us out. So the officers reported this to the magistrates. And when they heard that Paul and Silas were Roman citizens, they were alarmed. They came to appease them and escorted them from the prison, requesting them to leave the city. After Paul and Silas came out of the prison, they went to Lydia's house where they met with the brothers and sisters and encouraged them. And then they left. Let me pray with you. God, I pray that we, the brothers and sisters that are gathering right now, they're listening to this, that are watching this, that will gather on Sunday morning, Wednesday night, at midweek things in Oikosos, I pray that we would be demonstrating how to live with a calm focus on you. No matter how broken the world might seem on any given day, we sit in the middle, calmly focused on you, praying and singing and giving you glory. And Father, I pray that when we do that faithfully, you would bring others to join your kingdom as well. And I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Church, until I see you, you are